Welcome makers. Today I've got for you a really cool project. If you've got a Cricut, a laser cutter, or even print a lot of different stickers and want to put a coating on top of your stickers, the cold laminator is a project for you. And I got started doing this project because for the holidays this year, I wanted a large format vinyl cutter. Um, it actually holds 34 inch rolls and uh, I needed something to be able to take larger pieces of vinyl and be able to mask them or put them on things like transfer paper. Uh, I also have the CO2 laser now and a lot of the wood, uh, if you mask, you can then prevent a lot of the scorches that you find on uh, you know, wood pieces that go through a CO2 laser. So I originally went out, looked on Amazon for cold laminators. They're not terribly expensive, but about $150. Uh, once I took a look at those, I said, boy, there's not a lot of parts to it. Uh, the most complex part are these rollers here. Aside from that, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, so what I was able to do with some little bit of time in CAD was put these pieces together. And what we have here now is an open source cold laminator. I even went as far as making really uh, these pieces here for these rods where you can uh, you can either balance something uh, on top if it's a little bit bigger, or I originally designed this so that way you can just lift these up and put masking rolls in there. So a lot of different ways that you can use this. This bar here can also be used uh, to help guide uh, anything through the cold laminator. But this works great if you need to mask something. Uh, you can take these pieces of wood, they go through here pretty darn easily, and um, you're able to put the masking on there without having to go through the effort of trying to line a lot of different things up. So a cold laminator is definitely awesome if you're gonna be doing some work with lasers or uh, vinyl cutters and a lot of different things like that. So um, today we're gonna be talking about how to put one of these together yourself. All the files are open source. They'll be on thangs.com. And uh, I'll also include uh, some video here uh, showing you how I made these uh, silicone rollers. This was probably the most challenging part of the project, but uh, it's actually fairly easy to do. Uh, I used silicone, but I think I'm going to be using a different polymer going forward for this, and I'll talk about that a little bit in the video here. But overall, today we're gonna put one of these together, and I'm gonna cover how it all works, and uh, hopefully you'll build one of these yourselves. I know there's probably uh, a lot of husbands out there wondering what to get their, uh, significant other for, or their wife for uh, coming up on Valentine's Day. If they got a Cricut, uh, this is definitely something that they would get a lot of use for. And you can always help sell the fact that you 3D printed it and uh, made something for your wife. So with all that said, let's get to work. So I've got some 37 inch PVC here. You can really make it whatever size you want. Uh, you can make it as long or as short. So I see a lot of other people making smaller units. Uh, you're gonna wanna put one half in the cold laminator hardware. You can see that on the left here, uh, all those 3D prints. And then the right side, I've got a cup turner and uh, there's a 3D print that pretty much adapts the PVC to the cup turner size. So once you have everything level, the next step will be to mix up your platinum silicone. Uh, I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be switching to a polyurethane. And uh, if you've got a better suggestion, let me know down in the comments, but I think the polyurethane will work a little bit better. And that's usually what they use on these rollers anyhow. I had silicone on hand when I made this, so it uh, was my go-to there. Once you have your silicone or polyurethane mixed up, the next step is to just start putting it on the roller. Now, I did a few experiments with this and I found the part that worked best was when I had a very thin coat on the roller itself. Uh, I think what's happening is uh, with a larger coat, as the cup turner turns, it creates a, a centrifugal or centripetal I always get the two confused, but uh, basically causing the fluid to try to 
fly off of the tube itself. Uh, I think the polyurethane will also work better because it's got a shorter working time than the silicone rubber, but uh, essentially thin is the way to go in order to get a nice even coat on your homemade roller. So you can see I've got a good amount of silicone on there now, and I've got what looks like horizontal lines running through it from applying the silicone itself. Those will even out over a little bit of time. The big key here at this stage is to really just look for bare spots that might need a little bit more coverage and just drizzle on a little bit more silicone or polyurethane to get uh, a little bit more even coverage. Be careful not to apply too much, or as I said, uh, you'll end up with those ridges. So less is more. And with this, because it is translucent, it's a little hard to gauge the depth. Uh, trust me, there's more on there than you think. I think a good rule of thumb is with the blue silicone, if uh, you can't see the laser etched uh, lettering that is on the PVC tube, uh, you've got too much silicone on. And here you can see it's to the point now where it's just turning slowly around and those horizontal lines are starting to even out. When, once you get to this point, it's uh, really just a matter of giving it a little bit of time. Uh, you'll find a couple spots here and there where you might have to put one drop on just to uh, get a little bit more even coverage. But you can see in the middle there, it's starting to get pretty smooth. At this point, just let it be. Um, all of those little drips that you see that are in there uh, will even out pretty quickly. Uh, it's a good time to come back and clean up the other things, uh, any drips that you've got off of your workspace. Once you have your rollers complete, it's time to start the assembly. Uh, you'll need a board. I just painted one black to mount everything on. You'll need uh, eight different bearings. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to the bill of materials but the majority of it is put together with uh, M4 screws. There's a few M3s and one M5 screw. The big long M8 screws are used for the knobs. However, you can also buy the knobs. I found them on Amazon uh, in an M8 size as well. And then you won't have to use the 3D printed ones that I made. However, I kind of like the color scheme all being the same. There are caps for each end of the PVC tube, and I just simply attached mine with a little bit of super glue. Uh, that works really well on 3D printed parts, especially PLA or Pro PLA is what I'm using here. And that works really well uh, connecting to the PVC itself. So grab yourself a cheapo bottle of super glue and add the end caps to the end. Uh, be careful not to glue your fingers to the PVC. Um, I did it at least once during the process, so just a little bit of warning there. Yep, there it is, sticky fingers. After I cleaned my hands off with acetone to remove the glue and glued the other four caps, I move on to installing the bearings. Now you're gonna need two of these bearings for each side. Uh, if they should press in fine, however, uh, if you have a little difficulty, the rubber mallet uh, works great for getting these in. You'll put two in the base on each side, and then the carriage block, uh, you're going to put another two bearings in as well. And these are linked in the description. You can buy one package and it's enough for the entire project. Assembling the knob is straightforward. You've got two 3D printed parts and you just take some M3 screws and then the bottom plate that holds the bolt in place, you're just gonna install these uh, M3 screws. Uh, so the screwdriver I'm using is actually an electric screwdriver called a wow stick that uh, was all the craze in the Discord uh, last month. And uh, after seeing one, I was like, hey, this looks like a pretty good tool. And I gotta say for 3D printed parts, this tool works fantastic, and what's nice about it is it doesn't have enough torque to easily strip the plastic. So if you're like me and do a lot of uh, 3D printed parts where you drive a screw in directly, this wow stick was super helpful. I have a link for it down in the description. Once we have all the parts prepped, assembly is pretty simple. Uh, you'll need a couple of washers, and those prevent the screws from coming in contact with the top of the mounting plate. Uh, you'll just slide that in. 
and then uh, you'll screw on the locking screw. So this is used to lock it in place once you've got it at the right height. And uh, then after that, you're just gonna slide the carriage block in there. And there is a nut that fits in the little window there. And that is what raises or lowers the upper roller, allowing you to easily adjust the cold laminator for various heights. So once you've got this all put together, you've got one side, just repeat the process for the other side. Now we're ready to attach the mounting plates to the block of wood on the bottom. Uh, I just painted it black with some regular old acrylic paint. So you insert one roller and you'll use this just to make sure that you're aligning it up uh, so you don't get a drastic angle uh, you want to make sure that your rollers are somewhat straight going across to the other side of the board. Once you get that all where you want it, then just drop a couple of screws in. I just use cheap uh, drywall screws or wood screws. These things work great for more than just drywall and they grip the wood really well. So uh, a lot of times I use these drywall screws for a lot of a little work like this. So once you have both mounting plates attached, just grab yourself the end caps and these go on with some M4 screws. The caps are keyed to the rollers, so you can only put them on one way. That does help alignment of the screws considerably. You just drop in the uh, plate and then use the uh, wow stick here to drive those screws in a little bit at a time and uh, just make sure that the cap is uh, fully secured. Now, once you flip it around and do the other side, uh, you'll need to make sure that one of these includes the uh, crank handle. So it's just one M5 screw. Just make sure you don't tighten it down all the way. Uh, you wanna make it so that way the handle doesn't fall off but can still spin around in circles. Really not a lot of friction going on here, so uh, wasn't too worried about needing a bearing in here. The crank cap attaches the exact same way. Just throw that washer on there. And then uh, you're just gonna find the key to make sure that it lines up. And then once you've got that in place, just drive the screws in and you're all good to go. So the last part here is to attach these upright arms that hold the rods. And I did try to make this fairly open. So if you wanted to make your own 3D printed part to hold any sort of material, or maybe you wanna place a gear on there, I thought about maybe uh, making a foot pedal option for this, um, any of those options, those expansion ports or expansion holes on the side really will allow you to attach anything that you want to it. Once those are in place, you'll just drop a 5 16 or 8 millimeter rod into place. I tried to make this universal so it should hold uh, both US and uh, worldwide metric sizes. So the only thing left was to put a sticker on the front that said cold laminator. I've uh, cut and weeded my vinyl sticker and you can see how easy the cold laminator is to use. So I just line things up here. Now, if this was a bigger work piece, you know, a lot of times it's kind of hard to struggle with getting a good smooth and even application. The cold laminator makes it really easy. And if for some reason uh, you don't get enough, um, you know, pressure on there, you can run it through any number of times if you want. Uh, it's really kind of fun to do. And you can laminate just about anything. I've got a piece of wood here. I pulled the tape away from the roll because it's a little hard to pull it directly off the tape roll. It's just a little too sticky. But if you just line the workpiece up here and roll it through, uh, I've got a piece of uh, beech wood here. And this works great. Look, it applied that much easier than uh, using other techniques and spatulas. Uh, the nice thing is, is that you can do one after another, so you could run three, four, five of these through and mask them all at the same time. So as you can see, putting this together is really pretty easy. Most amount of work is gonna be in doing your 3D printed parts and making these rollers. You will need a cup turner in order to get a pretty even uh, coating on the PVC tube. The thing I didn't like about the silicone really is that on the edges here, it curls up a little bit and uh, it's very, very flexible. Now I knew silicone going into it was gonna be pretty flexible and I was hoping that because it was gonna be a little bit thin, 
uh, just barely coating these PVC tubes, my hope was is that uh, it wouldn't really come up or uh, bubble up at all. In actual use of this uh, for about a week, I think it starts to bubble up a little bit more. So I'm gonna be switching to probably polyurethane and I'll link to it in the description, but there is a two part uh, polyurethane that I can put on here that is softer. So it's, it's also used for mold making, but uh, it's from what I saw, looks a lot more durable and you can actually cast, uh, you know, something that's gonna be a little bit more flexible, but more rigid than silicone. So I'll have that link down in the description. I'll probably put an update video out once I redo these rollers, but even in silicone, these rollers work really well and I was able to mask stuff uh, pretty easily with it. Uh, my only concern is long-term is whether or not the silicone will work. So other than that, this thing went together pretty well. Uh, I would love to hear your ideas, especially if you've got uh, suggestions for these rollers. I'm gonna try the polyurethane. I thought about making a mold for one of these, but the problem is with something this wide, uh, it's a little bit harder to make a, a good mold in my opinion, where the cup turner worked really well. And I just used one of these uh, 3D prints that basically was disposable. So with that is gonna be the end of today's video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. I also wanted to take a minute to say that I'm going to be starting some memberships on the channel here. And the memberships of the channel is gonna be specific because I've had a lot of requests from different people to produce more content. But when I'm building larger projects like this, the difficulty that I have is just time. It's a matter of time to be able to plan out, design, and build larger projects like this. And I wanna to continue to do these different videos, but what I also wanna do with these different videos is uh, produce a video that is just about making this and not five or six different videos about you know all the struggles that I had uh, putting one of these together. So what I'm gonna be doing is having a channel membership. If that sort of content interests you, um, then you might wanna become a member. Uh, that definitely helps the channel, but what you're gonna get are gonna be regular videos, a lot of more behind the scenes videos uh, of just how I'm putting this stuff together, uh, frustrations I run into, experiments, things like that. So uh, I thought about starting a different channel for that type of content, but then thought it would just fragment things even more uh, on YouTube. So. Uh, that's what the channel memberships are gonna be about, but every project that I work on like this that uh, ends up coming to fruition, I'll still produce one of these videos. So if you aren't interested in becoming a, a member of the channel, by all means, please continue watching the videos, give a thumbs up, thumbs down, and uh, leave your comments on the different projects. So with all that said, I'm gonna say thanks again for watching, and we'll see y'all next time.